Rosa Banuelos is a third-year PhD candidate in statistical genetics at Rice University. Like thousands of other young scientists, Rosa aspires to complete her PhD, publish papers, and one day become faculty at a prestigious university. Ideally, I've always wanted to stay in research and academia, you know, make an impact. But, you know, as you spend more time in graduate school, you realize that that environment is pretty difficult to navigate. And, you know, you really need, like, good, like a good mentor, resources, and the professional development. I mean, that, that's really helpful. Beyond the training that we receive from our graduate program, the professional development is very important the NLM Biomedical Informatics Professional Development Series is very helpful in that sense because we actually prepare on how to give a presentation, how to prepare for an interview, or how to prepare for writing grants. Uh, you also learn about the unexpected, like, well, how do you pitch an elevator talk? Over the years, we found, of course, that biomedical informatics expanded and it encompassed an increasing range of venues that went beyond the lab. It went to the clinic, it went to the hospital, and now we find it even in the community. So we've changed our training programs to give our trainees the breadth of uh, um, skill, competence that they need to function in these areas. Um, lately, we've been particularly impressed by the number of our trainees who have found themselves acting essentially as change agents in these or such organizations. And it's, and it's become clear to us that if we can prepare our current trainees to fulfill that role, to actually go into an organization and be able to uh, show leadership, perhaps to resolve conflicts, uh, to make clear presentations of the ideas of biomedical informatics and how they apply in that particular situation, we will give our trainees a further advantage. Much of what our trainees need to know, they will learn in practice over years. In order to condense their experiential learning into a short span of time, what we do is to invite experts from psychology, management, business schools, organizational change, communications, and even people from industry, entrepreneurs, to come and talk to the students, engage with them, run workshops with them. And what we do after that is to film the workshops and we produce materials that go along with the films and put it all on Connections, which is an open repository of materials. For example, we have materials on conflict resolution, creativity, um, organizational change, entrepreneurship, and you can find these materials online by going to the repository in connections and looking for GCC NLM professional development. Located in the Texas Medical Center, the WM Keck Center for Quantitative Biomedical Sciences was founded in 1989 by Rice University and Baylor College of Medicine. Today, four more institutions are encompassed by the Keck Center. The MD Anderson Cancer Center, the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston, the University of Houston, and UT's medical branch in Galveston. If you, if you think for a moment of early days, when it was basically computational biology, a trainee could succeed uh, in, in a narrow sense, Very, could have wonderful scientific credentials, do wonderful scientific work, but operate in a relatively constrained environment, only working with a few people, collaborating with others, writing papers, etc., which is fine. But as biomedical informatics, in part because of changes in medicine and technology and all that, begins to encroach upon the hospital, where at the bedside, information from biomedical informatics is, is being applied to patient care, then you're in a different arena. You have to learn 
how to present your ideas clearly. You have to learn how to become a leader. You have to be, in some cases, be prepared to argue your way through difficult situations. I uh, really like the workshop on uh, writing a paper for Nature. You need to publish to have a uh, good career in academia. I think like presenting yourself, that's very important, but also being able to discriminate the important information or what really matters. Again, selling your ideas effectively. So I would say from the professional development series, the primary skill that I felt was uh, very important was communication and emphasizing how you summarize your research for people in your field, for people outside of your field, for lay people, and being able to uh, make this understandable and interesting and motivating and, and quick when you're in a context where you're only going to talk to someone for a few minutes. And that's a really important interaction to have and it's, part of, it's an important part of networking and also part of uh, presenting yourself professionally.